Okay, we're back here live at Velocity Conference. This is SiliconAngle.com's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, SiliconAngle, an independent media company, partnering with O'Reilly Media to bring The Cube to all their events. And one of the most exciting things about uh, The Cube is we get to talk to all the alpha geeks, the entrepreneurs, the developers, the CEOs of startups and big companies, but also people who are domain experts. And our next guest is Nicole Sullivan. Her Twitter handle is Stubbernella, at Stubbernella. So I just tweeted on the cube, at the cube. You can get that Twitter handle there. Um, you just gave a talk. Welcome to the cube. Thank you. So the cube is where we kind of have good casual chat. So, um, and the Twitter sphere is watching. So I want to ask okay. you, what do you think, what do you think about your talk and, um, and how it went over? Oh, I thought it went over really well. A bunch of people <laughs> came up in the end and had lots of questions. I feel like good questions is a good judge of whether a talk worked or not. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I got, if you get I got mobbed, hard questions. If you get mobbed at the end and you know, everyone's <laughs> kind of like, ah. Mobbed and they think I'm a little bit wrong. <laughs> I feel like I've done my job yeah, correctly. You, otherwise there's no interaction, you know? <laughs> I always said, if you say the sun's going to set in the east, you're going to have someone say it's wrong and that's the internet. But, <laughs> but um, one of the things we've been talking about, Nicole, I want to get your perspective of because you know, Dave and, who, and Volante, who was here yesterday, he and I were commenting on the wrap up yesterday that mm -hmm. this is not a cloud show. This is not a web show. It's not a UI show. It's kind of an intersection mm -hmm. of all. Mm -hmm. So you got the DevOps piece, the web ops, which Facebook, Google, and the, the big web scale companies have done and, and had to build their own stuff. You have essentially this middle kind of software optimization perspective, and then you have the UI design, all kind mm -hmm. of interacting. So the common theme yesterday was, it's a holistic systems design, thinking about the user experience mm. with the trade-offs of infrastructure. So with that, you know, your, your, your talk is more on the CSS side, that's the front end. So you know, what is the front end, state of the market for the front end? I mean, obviously, we all know mobile's great, Facebook's announcing video today, and so obviously the user experience is number one. But what's happening? What are the key trends that you're seeing around the user experience, the tools, the, the languages? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think at first it's really funny uh, what you said because I, I spoke once to a um, database conference, which I'm not sure why they had <laughs> me. I think I was there for like, you know, we should have some <laughs> diverse perspectives. Um, but uh, I talked to them and I said, well, regardless of how fast you make your queries, I can bring your site to a, uh, to a complete halt with uh, some terrible UI code, and they're like, oh, what, no. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's true, so I think that in terms of performance, the UI really uh, makes a pretty big difference. Yeah, um, the trade-offs, I mean, you know, the database guys are thinking, wait a minute, I'm going to serve you know, out of cache or solid state or flash, I'm done. <laughs> Hey guys, take it over. Mm -hmm. But you're saying well, especially for big companies, you know. So typically, I do big UI refactors of of uh, larger companies or startups that have gotten to that point of success that they have to actually deal with everything they did to get there. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, when it's at that scale, you know, whether you serve uh, 50 images or 25 or 10 makes a really big difference uh, in terms of the overall uh, so load that you're putting on. Are you prescriptive? Do you walk in and saying? Here's how you got to fix it. You're the doctor, you come in, it's just like, okay, is it surgery? I mean, the patient on the table <laughs> is the UI, right? So how do you, I mean, what's the conversation like? Um, usually there are things that they're doing really well and other things that are just not working at all. So I try to frame it in terms of taking the bits that are working well and making them play nicely together um, rather than having a system where different parts of the system are competing with each other. You know, I love the Zuckerberg philosophy, just break stuff because I roll my eyes. That's great for, you know, headlines. It's like, okay, that's, that's, that, does that mean no QA? Does that mean uh, DevOps? Um, and also, you know, code matters, right? You got to have good code. So what is the big thing that you're seeing in the performance side? Because startups can do agile, and that's been great for the startup mm -hmm. community. I can put up on AWS, I can build it up, and then you get to that point where you're saying, okay, we got validation. We have to get big, things right now. Got some big funding, uh -huh. we're growing like crazy, and then, but the rocket ship's in the middle, is, is in the air. Yeah. How do you change the engine in mid-flight? Is well, that kind of you it's very carefully is the answer to that. Yes. Um, and there's some new trends uh, in terms of the UI that are actually helping with that. So some of the flat design stuff um, has been really great for performance because uh, generally speaking, simpler designs are faster to render. Um, some of, well, but on the other hand, some of the topography stuff has made it harder. So it feels like it's a, it's a push and pull most of the time. As well, responsive is an incredible opportunity to make things faster and better, but often goes the other way and you end up making things slower and clunkier. Um, so I think it's all about like realizing that some of those goals are great goals, but how yeah. we get there really matters. Yeah, we had the Etsy guy on yesterday and we had some other folks on. They said, you know, perception's reality. 
Perce it is. Perceived speed yeah. mm -hmm. is an interesting dynamic, and there's some art and science to that. Mm -hmm. um, what have you learned in that area? Because it is, it is kind of an art, you kind of have, but there's also some, you know, some either math or predict analytics behind things. How do you look at that, that part of the game? Because page load mm -hmm. and or app loading is pretty critical. Um, so we always start by getting the data, because if you don't have data, then you can't make any decisions. Uh, so I think that that's the biggest first thing. Uh, and people don't think of the UI that way. They don't think of it as something that they can quantify and something that they can measurably improve, but you actually can. Uh, so we start uh, usually by going in and figuring out what went wrong, and it's a, sort of like an autopsy for a site, I guess. <laughs> uh, what, you know, what exactly has uh, made things kind of get all, off the rails in terms of the UI. What have you seen the most in terms of use cases that made things go off the rails? Um, there are a lot of things, but I think maybe the biggest is the, the perception that your um, views, the way your views are architected is going to match the way your UI is architected. And that's actually one of the best ways to make your, your UI incredibly inefficient. Um, and so it's weird because you think you've got like, you know, if you're writing Ruby in the middle layer, you're like, oh, you know, it works like this. Each view has its SAS file. Each, you know, each piece is uh, very clearly organized. But it turns out you're, it's basically like taking your DB schema and trying to configure Apache with it. It's there, it doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, you can, you, yeah, yeah. in this case, you can force it, but uh, yeah, I mean, but it, you end up you with can something. You ship it. It looks good. It will work. But when you get to X number of views and traffic, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't hold up. You know, what's to the bed, you know, it kind of crashes. And usually people get to the point where they can't really release features anymore, which is yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, a, yeah. a pain as well. You know, I always say, you know, the, the joke is, what's the rookie mistake most people make? But a lot of the developers that are doing this front end work for stars are really good coders, and they will do that. They'll go to what they're comfortable with. They'll say, okay, here's my database scheme. I'm going to match this. It's elegant, it's linear thinking. Okay, it's done, it works. And then, you know, they're successful, and then they have to kind of go, okay, we got to we got to fix this. So the question is, what's not the, not the rookie mistake, what is the, pro mistake that people make because a lot of those guys, they have to then go out and budget and then hire real UI help, real uh, surgeons if you will, or kind of reboot oh. the UI. So those guys are pro developers, but then UI is a whole nother ball game, so they have to then build the discipline. A lot of startups, for instance, need to do that. They yeah. don't necessarily want to go out and fund the UI teams too many, mm -hmm. too, too expensive, but they'll do it themselves and then they'll get to the point where they're like, okay, fix this. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I think that's, it's okay that that happens, right? Um, yeah. They're trying to be successful at something. Better and, than going and out of business. Yes, you know? <laughs> it is, right? I mean, you could invest in making the UI layer code perfect from day one, but I don't think that makes sense. I actually think it's perfectly okay to like pivot and throw some stuff yeah. against the wall so and figure it out. So for those guys, what's the, your advice to them? You know, saying, hey, you know, if you want to take that approach, it's, it's prudent to do that, it's good startup advice. Like I said, you know, your other choice is to go out of business, spend all your money and not get that B round or uh -huh. funding. Uh, but to those pros saying, hey, if you're going to do that, here's mm -hmm. how you, you can think about it. Is there any advice you can share with those kind of developers? Um, I think the biggest thing is to think in terms of components and look for your patterns. Um, all the patterns are there, it's just hard to see them. We get wrapped up in like the day-to-day -day of, wait, this feature was released by that team and they don't talk to this team and you know the sort of team dynamics and things like that and um, don't realize that actually these two things visually are exactly the same uh, thing or some one component with a subtle variation. Um, and so I think uh, taking a step back and seeing those patterns, also invest in the UI folks. Like often people have really good UI developers that just need a little bit of investment of working with someone uh, who's a little more senior to help them kind of level up and then they do great and they can do amazing yeah. work. And uh, it's also the back end relationships too, like you know, having good understanding of the back end teams too. Do you see that dynamic also play well? It seems like there are these layers and they don't know how to talk <laughs> yeah. to each other. No? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a back end guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're totally fast, it's on Redis. Yeah. <laughs> now what? <laughs> Hire a UI guy, that's the answer most people say. But it's not that easy. No, it's a very, very hard profile to hire for. I just hired two amazing UI developers and I feel like I was so lucky that I managed to get them. Yeah, where do you live? <laughs> I live in San Francisco. Well, so that's a hard market to hire in too. It is, yeah, yeah it is uh, really You must hard. have had some good uh, convincing. Um, <laughs> what, what can you share with the audience out there for the Velocity Conference? What is it about here today? Because you know, it's one of those shows where it's about to bust out into the mainstream. We're already seeing some big names here from outside the community, uh, looking at the web performance. Obviously, there's already big names here, but like corporate guys, enterprise guys are starting to come in, which is a telltale sign of explosion, mm -hmm. of growth. But it's not a cloud show. Again, it's not, it's not hey, it's not a cloud show. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like people, you know, vendors flexing their cloud muscles or, you know, Amazon's not here. It's a different crowd, but it's a, it's a community. What would you share with the folks out there about what is Velocity? 
Oh, Velocity's deeply nerdy on whatever level you're in, whether you're whether you're interested in, in DevOps, whether you're interested in scalability, whether you're interested in UI or performance or networking, like whatever you're into, you're gonna find like the deepest, nerdiest part of it here. So yeah, and the, I think and it's great. And I mean, developers. You meet people who can just completely dig in. Yeah, yeah, the people are writing code. I was in the speaker room, I saw mm -hmm. Theo in there writing code. People uh -huh. are talking in the hallways, good hallway conversation. But again, that's the kernel community. What do you think it's going to take to move this mission out to the mainstream? Because I think the Velocity's got the right formula. They understand that the design side is really integrating with DevOps. So what DevOps did for network and ops and developers, mm -hmm. now is happening on a systems level with the UI. And you're on the UI side, so how do you see that evolving? Um, I think it's already happened, actually. I think that um, ordinary UI developers are starting to talk to me about performance and they're thinking about it and they're thinking about componentizing stuff and um, they may not always know um, how to measure stuff and I think that's where the folks who've been in the community a little longer can help out is um, how to dig in, how to get the metrics you need, how to, how to make decisions um, because they're getting sensitized to that they should care about it. Um, but yet they need to know how to decide, other than sort of hocus pocus uh, rules based stuff, you know? We need to get people going from, I can apply these principles that you've taught me to, I can think about what the next set of principles might be. And I think, I think that's where the community okay, really gets Nicole involved. Okay, Nicole Sullivan inside the cube. We got a break, because we got a tight schedule, because uh, <laughs> the show, we got a break early, because they have uh, the breakdown here. But I want to ask you one final question we'll end on is, okay. what are you watching out there in, this, in the landscape of, not just the Velocity ecosystem, and of the geeks and the alpha geeks here and the nerds, um, but beyond, as, as the world and society changes, we're all connected, got the internet of things coming on, I, you know, you got you know, the iPod guy building an amazing tool for managing your utilities, and so user interfaces transcending just our interaction to computing devices, to the home and other things. What do you see out there? What are you watching personally out in the landscape that's interesting to you? Um. Well, honestly, I think I'm watching out to stay away from Google Glass, guys. <laughs> Can I admit that? Um, all yeah, the all okay. the all the revelations about um, <laughs> all the revelations about where people might be sneaking a peek into what we're up to, and then having yeah. people walk around with cameras on their faces. It turns out not so cool with that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of a big deal right now. Um, yeah. yeah. Privacy too. Yeah, okay, this is huge. the cube. We got a break. We got a tight schedule in the afternoon. This is Silicon Angles live coverage, wall to wall. We'll be right back after this short break.